Hello, in this video we'll be demonstrating Beaumont's patented melt flipper technology. There will be two main goals for this presentation. The first is to evaluate melt flipper's effect on balancing the fill of your mold. Secondly, we're going to look at achieving this melt flipper balance and see how that transfers into achieving equal pack pressures in your cavity. This is the part we will be making and we're going to focus in on cavities 1B and 2B. The rest of this presentation, we'll just call this inside cavity and outside cavity. The reason why we're focusing in on them is if you would look at the post gate location, underneath those ejector pins, we have pressure transducers. We're running this mold in a sodic plunger style injection molding machine, and we have pressure transducers so that we can see them in our CEASE data acquisition system. To familiarize yourself with these curves, the first curve we're going to look at is the upper left. In the upper left curve, we're seeing the pressure graph from the molding machine. So you'll see that we are following standard molding practices of a fast injection rate. Later on, I'll show you that that is to a 95% full part. Then it transferred to a pack pressure. The bottom left graph is showing you the pressure traces from those two locations that I mentioned earlier overlaid over each other. So you have the inside and the outside cavity. Inside cavity is the red, outside cavity is the blue. In the upper right graph, we are seeing the inside cavity by itself, and in the bottom right, we are seeing the outside by itself. If you look closely, you'll be able to see there is a thin black line as well. That's a template curve that was saved earlier in the day, so that we, way we can see um, if I've ever changed anything in the process to make Mel Flipper look better. That's what's nice about this demonstration is instead of just showing you the parts of with and without Mel Flipper, you'll be able to see every step along the way what is done. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off my pack pressure. So what you'll see in this upper left graph on the next shot is that I go at the fast injection rate to my transfer position and then this red line will drop down to zero. You'll still be able to see the black pressure trace as a reference curve. And I'll grab the shot that comes out so we can evaluate what it looks like with fill only. As you can see from the graph, we've dropped down to zero pack pressure, and this is the shot that we get. And this is the problem that Melt Flipper was created to correct. We have a brand new molding machine and a brand new mold in the press, and we are following standard molding practices, filling at a fast injection rate. This is a PCABS material, and we're filling in about 0.56 seconds. So it's a standard fill time for a part this size, and we're doing everything we should to make these parts be equal from cavity to cavity. But you'll notice that the fill is not equal. We have the same flow path to each cavity, but they physically are not filling the same. Usually at this point in the demonstration, somebody would say, well, we don't sell short shots. And what they're really saying is that I don't care what imbalance I have during filling, because once I apply pack pressure to my parts, and I get the full part that I'm going to box up and ship to my customer, they're all going to be the same. and they are in a sense saying pack pressure is going to equal out all the imbalances that are formed during filling. That's what we're going to look at in the rest of this presentation. I will apply three different pack pressures in a row. 4,000, then 6,000, then 8,000 PSI pack pressure. And we're going to evaluate by looking at the inside and outside cavity pressure curves if that's true. If pack pressure really does get rid of all the imbalances formed during filling. So the first curve will be 4,000. If pack pressure is applied uniformly, you'll see that these curves will lay right on top of each other. So watch this upper left curve. You'll see the red line jump up to 4,000 PSI. And I will grab the shot that comes out. There you see the 4,000 PSI, and when you look at the parts, you will see that we have the inside cavities full, the outside cavities are still short. It's the same thing that the graph shows you. You see the inside cavities having more pressure than the outside cavity. So we're going to go to the 6,000 PSI. And we see more of the same. Here's the 6,000 PSI shot. 
You see the inside cavities are still full and the outside cavities are not quite there. Again, you see that. Now watch closely when this 8,000 pack pressure is applied and see what happens to the shapes of the curves in the bottom left. And you'll have noticed that there was a drastic change. What happened is all eight cavities are finally full. So you can see what actually happens here. All along, this red trace, which is our inside cavity, has been leading the way. The material does not want to go that direction anymore, and it reaches a point during packing where all the pressure, all the flow of material shifts to the outside cavities, and you see it just take off on the outside. So here we are, full cavities, and you can see that these are not packed out the same. I like to explain to people that these pressure traces, it's really, this is that plastic being forced against the steel in your cavity. So it's, it's like the fingerprint of your part. This is where we get consistent part weights. This is where we get the dimensions from our parts. So this is the problem. A brand new mold, brand new machine, doing everything I should as a processor to make these parts the same. And you can see that I'm physically not creating two parts the same from one cavity to the next. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn off the pack pressure. We'll see that our shot will come out being the same as it was in the beginning, with zero pack pressure, our fill only shot. And then I will stop the machine, take out the intersection that has the conventional runner, and I'm going to put our patented melt flipper technology in the tool. I've just finished putting the melt flipper technology in the tool. I'm going to start it up at the exact same process I was before I shut the machine down. And you'll notice at that process I was filling for the conventional runner. I had my fullest cavity at 95% full and I was at a fast injection rate. So I'll go ahead and start it up at that same process. I'll grab the first shot that comes out so we can see visually what changes, but notice in this upper left graph, you'll see that I'm still injecting at a fast injection rate that I'm transferring at the same transfer position. I have not changed anything with the process. And here you can see the effect of the melt flipper. We had our fullest cavity at 95 in the inside flow group with this runner. Now with the melt flipper technology, we've balanced the fill to all cavities. Two things that we notice here, first of all, like I mentioned, I am still injecting at the same injection rate as I was with the conventional runner. I'm still transferring at the same position. The second thing is people often think the way that we're achieving a balance is somewhere in this melt flipper technology that we're applying, we're putting a flow restricting, restriction. We're restricting the flow to the inside cavity forcing the material to go to the outside cavities to balance things out. And if I was putting a flow restriction in the flow path, you would see an increase in fill pressure. And there is none, because that's not what we are doing. Now I am going to change something with the process now that I have melt flipper technology applied. You'll notice with the conventional runner, my fullest cavity was 95% full. With melt flipper at that same shot size, I do not have None of the cavities are, are at 95% full. So I'm going to change my transfer position on my machine in order to get the fullest cavity to 95% full. From doing this before, we already know what it is for this machine and this mold. And I'm actually putting 8% more volume of material in during that fast injection phase of the molding process. This is the phase where we inject fast to 95% full because we're wanting to 
uh, minimize the effects of viscosity variations in material. So you will see in this next graph that I will inject further. So you'll see this red line is now going to move slightly to the right of where the black line is before it drops down to zero. But I want people to understand that this is not a negative effect of using melt flipper. We are actually putting 8% more volume of material into our tool at a fast injection rate, which is helping us to minimize the effects of viscosity variation in material. This is a huge benefit for the processors and for the quality in your parts. So you can see that in this graph, this red line has now moved in. And that distance from the black line to the red line is the 8% that I was talking about. And now we're at a point that I can actually compare the effect of pack pressures equally. It is an apples to apples comparison. When I had the conventional runner, full cavities were 95% full. Now my melt flipper runners, all cavities are 95% full. And I will apply the same three pack pressures, 4,000, 6,000, and 8,000. Remember, the initial statement was, I don't sell short shots. Pack pressure is going to equal out the imbalances that were formed during fill. If that were true, then in the end, when I get to the 8,000 pack pressure, these red curves should look just like the black curves that were the template saved at the 8,000 pack pressure with the conventional runner. Here's the 4,000 PSI pack pressure. You can see that we already have all eight cavities full. Remember with conventional runner, that did not happen until we reached 8,000 PSI pack pressure. I'm not going to grab any more parts because all you're going to see is they get more and more packed out since they're already full. But you'll notice that on these curves at 6,000, the cavity pressure jumps up to now 2,860 PSI. When we get to the 8,000 pack pressure, which is the next shot coming out, we will now be at the same pack pressure we were with the conventional runner when we stopped applying pack pressure to the tool. These black curves was the cavity pressure, inside and outside cavity, with the conventional runner. Notice the difference with melt flipper technology compared to the conventional runner. I'm applying the same 8,000 pack pressure. The only difference in the process is that 8% more volume put into the tool during fast injection phase of our molding process. Notice how this pack pressure, not only is the fill balanced, but now how this pack pressure is being applied is balanced. And remember what I said about these pressure curves. This is that fingerprint of your part. This is where your part weights are coming from, your dimensional consistencies. I am physically making the same cavities side by side in one shot. Another thing to notice is with the conventional runner, when we applied 8,000 PSI pack pressure, we only achieved a little over 3,100 PSI to the cavity. With melt flipper, we're at almost 4,500 PSI. We're physically getting more pressure to the cavity. We're able to pack out more uh, <clears throat> with melt flipper. So some benefits from this demonstration. People will say, yes, we've seen this in our tools. We've seen this fill and balance. But what benefits does it give me? And we don't want to just say, put a melt flipper in, and these are the benefits you'll see. So we're going to actually say, in this demo, with this mold, this material, what were the benefits that we found? And the first thing that I would like to point out is that we, in, we, we raised our process window by 300%. My definition for process window is minimum pack pressure needed to, full, to get all cavities full to the maximum pack pressure we could apply. You saw that when with the conventional runner, I did not have all eight cavities full until 8,000 PSI. But with the with melt flipper runner, we had all cavities full at 4,000 PSI pack pressure. The next two things kind of go together. I'm talking about the variation from cavity to cavities, peak cavity pressure, and then also the integral or the area under the curves. So from cavity to cavity, we were able to reduce that variation of the, the peak cavity pressure reached by 400% with melt flipper. The area under the curve, or the integral, so you notice these black curves from inside to outside cavities, those areas, we reduce that variation by, by putting the melt flipper technology in by 20%. Another benefit that people quite often may not realize they can achieve with melt flipper is when you think about the fill only shot with the conventional runner, we had two distinct flow groups, inside cavities versus outside cavities. 
what we did was a gate freeze time. So the time that your gate freezes and no more materials entering your cavity. And, and we looked at it, instead of as a whole shot, each individual cavity. What time did this gate freeze compared to this gate freeze? And we noticed there were two distinct gate freeze times, the inside cavities versus the outside cavities. When we did the same gate freeze study with the melt flipper technology, all cavities had a gate freeze time that was the same. And it was at the lower number. So in turn, we reduced the gate freeze time needed for this mold by 6% in this, with this PCABS material. So if I just reduce my gate freeze time by 6%, that means I can reduce my pack time by 6%. And if I do that, I'm going to reduce my cycle time. And in this industry, time is money. Another thing, a big benefit that I want people to understand with this melt flipper is that when you see that you may have a little higher fill pressure after putting melt flipper technology in, this is not a negative thing. This is a huge benefit. Because remember, this is where I... In this tool, I put 8% more volume of material in during that fast injection rate, minimizing the effect of materials viscosity changes. So I hope this demonstration will help you understand Melt Flipper a little further.